think it might get not giving. <laughs> Mike, our fearless leader. All right, I'm being told not to start yet. I'm waiting for Risa to give me a thumbs up. In case you're wondering why I'm just standing here. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so beautiful to look at. Linda, you know, it's compliments like that that really help me get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and we've got Mike. And he's waving, okay. I was explaining, Mike, that we're waiting for Risa to give us a thumbs up to actually begin. Okay, sounds good. Oh, and is that our video? Yeah. Camera? Oh, your camera. Oh, fine. Hey, it's great we're all just in a room like this. That in itself is something to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Can we take masks off? Yes. Uh, so I am told that as um, that everybody in this room can in fact take their masks off, which is the whole reason why everybody is so um, spread out like we are and i think it's interesting so i should probably we should probably ignore the camera and just speak to the people who are present right oh of course i think you're a little biased because you're the ones that are present <laughs> Is there always such a um, countdown to when it goes live on HHTV? We are now live, Eli. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm live now. Yeah. All right. Uh, so welcome. This is an introduction to Methune, to who Methune is as a firm and what they're doing here on our campus as our new architects. Um, Methune has been recommended by a couple of our own in-house uh, resident architects. And for that reason, we, uh, Mike Gostrom and I, well, Mike Gostrom especially, uh, interviewed a couple of architectural firms, and Methune by far, you know, outshined the, the rest, and they were all great firms. But after Methune started working with us, we learned quickly that, oh my gosh, this is a company that is really enjoyable to work with. They listen very well, yes. Um, I mean, Mike and I talk about it all the time that you really hear what it is that we're saying and it's evident with the very next meeting what it is that you present. So it's really been a joy to work with these um, talented professionals. What they will be presenting to you right now is just to give them, uh, to give everybody, I guess, a little bit of background about who they are. And I would like everybody to take special notice of the design samples that they provide because it'll be very diverse and it's always in the context of who their client is. So it's not some, hey, this is Methune's brand and we're going to, as a cookie cutter, duplicate this to any client who hires us. No, they are going to listen to the client and they will um, provide a design that uh, matches, you know, matches their preferences. So. So I think I'll just turn it over. 
and let you folks speak. So we've got Elizabeth, Lisa, and Sean, and I'll let them uh, introduce themselves further. Thank you, Eli. Hopefully this, you can hear me. Um, I'll start by saying I'm Lisa Scrivante. I'm a partner at Methuen, and we are um, excited to talk with you today, and we've been enjoying, really enjoying working on these projects and learning more about your very unique um, and exciting community. So with that, I'll, I'll say I am an architect. Um, I focus on um, a lot of different project types over the years. I've done a number of libraries and higher ed, and even some healthcare in my past, but lately have been focused on hospitality sorts of spaces as well as creative workplace. Um, so a lot of what we've learned and practiced over the years really come, applies to all of these variety of projects that we've been looking at at uh, your campus. Turn it to Elizabeth. Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth and um, similar to Lisa, I also have worked on a very large variety of projects in my years of practice. I'm an interior designer and a principal at Methune. I've been at Methune for about eight years. I've worked on projects ranging from science to higher education to hospitality, uh, creative workplace, even some cultural projects as well. And I've been focusing the last eight years on hospitality and creative workplace projects. Uh, we are really excited about this project. We are honored to be working with your community and have just had a blast working with um, residents and the leadership here. So with that, I'll turn it over to Sean. I'm Sean Crichton. I'm the project manager um, for the Methune team and our consultant team. I've been at Methune for 23 years. So I get to cover the older projects when we talk about specific projects on things that I might have been around for. Um, uh, yeah, I like, like Elizabeth and Lisa, I've had a pretty varied career, mostly people-centered, uh, with the exception of some wastewater treatment and uh, green stormwater infrastructure, which is people-centered as well in its own way. Um, I think Lisa's going to lead us off. Yeah, oh. that's great. Um, and just to give you an idea of what we'll be doing, we're going to spend about 20 minutes in all talking with you um, about some of our work that we've done, just, and a lot of it you'll, you'll recognize um, living in this area. And then we will open it up to questions um, and whatever general discussion we want to embark on. So with that, I will show you um, uh, in our office, we have quite a, quite a team working on the project. And we are a combination collection of architects and landscape architects, interior designers that are focused on this particular project. We're also showing um, a couple of our key consultants um, one of which is uh, our acoustician, Julie Wiebush. Um, and she, um, I don't know if can you do your pointer at all? I don't know if you can see my, there we go, yeah. CJ Brockway, and she is our lighting expert, very, very important to these projects. And um, uh, Walker Sherman, who is our AV expert, and he, um, many of you have already met him and you'll meet some of these other consultants as well as our team as we continue on the project. So as I mentioned, Methune um, is a little bit different in that we are an interdisciplinary firm. That means that we are a collection of architects, interior designers, landscape architects, and urban designers. And that is unique um, for many firms. And what it allows us to do is look at a project from all different directions. It really means that we consider every aspect of a project up front, and it, it results in a rich sort of solution to each of our design um, problems that we solve. We have offices in Seattle, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. Our headquarters is in Seattle. We have about 125, maybe? in Seattle, and then um, San Francisco has about 45, and we have 15 or so in Los Angeles. So um, all along the West Coast, and we do projects really all over the country, however. One thing that's um, interesting about Within is that uh, we are a deep green firm in that um, sustainability and green design is really our DNA, and it has been for many, many years. 
so that every project we view through the lens of sustainability and how can we use the right products for a healthy environment, how can we do the right thing for our, our earth, um, it's really important and um, it's definitely something we do with every project. We also have a mission that is designed for positive change. And by that, um, I mean that every project we work on, we view through the lens of it being a project that will create positive change. And that's how we actually select the types of projects that we want to work on. It's really, really important to us. We also um, focus our work on places where people live, places where people learn, and places where people work. And it's interesting how the boundaries between those projects really is blurring, and the, those different project types within our office inform one another. We learn from the educational groups, and we, they learn from us and what we're doing. And it's, it's, uh, it, again, allows for a very rich sorts of solutions to the design work that we do. With that, I will let Sean give you some history. So Bethune was started in um, 1949 by Omer Bethune. So in addition to being an architect practitioner, he uh, lectured at the University of Washington. Um, and some of the legacy of that part of, 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 of his involvement in the firm early on were two things. One is pull up a chair, uh, it's a, that collaborative sense of working together, of informally um, uh, uh, informing each other's works. Uh, as a really integral part of the firm. The other legacy of that was uh, a, a lot of research and development kind of work, um, which is something that has carried on um, and actually even been in a stronger uh, aspect of the firm in the last few years. Um, this is a, a general timeline of, of a few of the things happening. Like in 1957, if you were in Bellevue, the early firm days were really spent a lot in Bellevue. There was a big glass bank. It was a beautiful structure. Most of the early work that Omer was involved in in Bellevue has been redeveloped over the years. Um, that's actually happened to me most recently as well. Um, there, there have been a series of other projects along the line there. I'm gonna highlight just three of them that are sort of slightly more distant. Um, so one you might be familiar with, um, RAS flagship store in Seattle. So that one opened in 1996. Um, it was a really uh, seminal project for, uh, for REI, if you guys remember the old place on Capitol Hill where you went in and you were in multi-levels and multi-buildings and it was, a, it was hard to figure out where you were at times in space. So this was, you know, them really having a, a presence and a, a, a something recognizable in the city. And it led to a very long-term relationship with REI. We worked with them on different stores, some flagship stores in Tokyo and Denver um, that were really pretty amazing buildings, as well as smaller stores in just around the country. Um, and I actually got to work on their corporate headquarters at that point in Kent, um, which opened in 2000 and, and is the one that's being torn down right now. So, um, <laughs> live long enough, as you, as you, as you all know. Um, so in 2002, there was another big project for Methuen called Islandwood. It was an environmental learning center on Bainbridge Island. And the idea of Islandwood was really that this was um, it, was a, it was a brainchild of, of Paul and Debbie Brainerd, um, and they, they really wanted a magical place for children to learn about the environment. So there are things like the treehouse, treehouse part of the project that you can see there. And there was also a really strong integration of art in, in, in the facility. So the piece that you see, the, the saw blade, is actually a Mobius strip saw blade by Buster Simpson. Um, and it's got, it's got a Paul New York quote on it about you know, tugging at anything and you find it's connected to everything everything else. And that saw blade, is, turns out, was one of the ones that was used when they did the first cut on the, the, um, the lumber yard, or, well, sorry, in the, when they were clearing the forest and, and milling things into lumber. This was an old milling site. Um, we got to work with Buster Simpson again, actually, in one of the wastewater treatment projects. I was really happy to be part of Brightwater, which had a huge, uh, it's amazing. If you ever get a chance, go toward the art at the sewage treatment plant, it's really worth it. Um, and so this was is 2007, if any of you are into wine, um, Novelty, Novelty Hill Janook Winery is in Woodenville. Um, it's really easy to get to on the Sammamish River Trail if you ride a bike, um, but um, there, it also has good parking. 
Um, it was a, a way, that the, 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 the idea is it's sort of from grape to glass. It was looking at the whole process, making the whole process visible when you go to the winery, and with just some spectacular spaces, both indoors and outdoors, um, that you know work all year round uh, to enjoy a little bit of the, the red. I think. When I came to Methuen maybe 12 years ago, this is the project that I came to work on, which is um, not in Seattle, but it is in Tucson, Arizona. It's called Miraval, and it's um, a wellness uh, resort retreat. Um, so you're seeing images of a yoga space as well as one of the residences that we helped to design. It was a big, big project, um, but a lot of uh, a lot of learnings from that, and many will be applied um, as we move forward with your work. This is called Sanctuary Studios. This is in Seattle, and we completed this maybe about a year ago. Um, and uh, it's really, um, it's an immersive wellness experience. It's, it's actually a yoga kind of retreat. And what it does is uses technology in a really interesting way to provide these very immersive sorts of um, yoga uh, wellness experiences. And you can choose where you want to be in the world um, and select that location and do this yoga kind of retreat and it, there's all kinds of ways to customize the room to make it feel like you're really there. And what's interesting about this is um, it's really a full-scale mock-up that we pr uh, created for uh, the person whose idea it was so that he could use it to have, uh, have understand how the space was working and also bring in um, investors to see the space and because it has been so successful, we are now planning you know, maybe four or five others, and there's plans for another dozen beyond that all over the country. So it's really a one-of-a-kind, unique sort of a experience. This project is called Enzo Village, which is a Zen-inspired senior living community. This is in Healdsburg, California. If any of you have been there, beautiful, beautiful part of the country. And this project, um, Methuen is doing the site planning, the buildings, as well as the interior architecture um, and the landscape. That's very exciting. I think we're in construction documents right now. And this is another project that some of you may have seen. This is Warehouser's headquarters. It is located in historic Pioneer Square, and the building actually sits on Occidental Square. So one of the really interesting aspects of this project was really for our team to figure out how to build a modern new building in the context of a historical uh, neighborhood in Seattle. And so uh, this building has some um, retail amenity spaces on the ground level, and then uh, the warehouser headquarters is seated up above and has a beautiful view of Occidental Park. What you're seeing in these images are the lobby of warehousers headquarters, and then a lovely cafe uh, right off of Occidental Park. So if you make your way down to Pioneer Square, you should definitely check it out. Another project that we've done recently is Heartline. It is located in Portland, Oregon and it is a residential and mixed-use property. So it has some office, has residences, as well as some retail and amenity spaces. This image is an aerial photo of a deck on the resident level. Uh, we worked on the building, the interior, as well as the landscape. So you can see some beautiful work from our landscape architecture team. Uh, this is a view of the lobby for the residents, and then another view of one of the outdoor amenity spaces. We've done a great deal of work with high-tech clients all over the country. Uh, Google is one of our clients, and this is an image of a coffee lab that we did at Google. What's interesting about this project is it's not just a coffee shop, it's actually an integrated coffee learning experience. So uh, Googlers can actually take classes in the coffee lab and learn about different types of coffee as well as different brewing techniques. Um, we were really inspired by the production of coffee and uh, the floor graphics and the tile that you see um, on the coffee 
um, ordering station were inspired by latte art. So we had a lot of fun with this project. And then another uh, project that maybe some of you have visited is the National Nordic Museum. We worked on this project with uh, our client for a number of years. It is a project that is very close to our hearts and uh, located in Ballard, which is my neighborhood. So go Ballard. Um, <laughs> it's really exciting when this one actually got built. Um, if you've been to the museum, you know that this project really highlights uh, the history of all of the Nordic countries as well as the Nordic American experience. Um, it has a lot of really wonderful exhibits, wonderful coffee shop and cafe. So if you haven't made it out there, I highly recommend it. So we thought from there we would move on just a little bit to um, share a little with you about what we've been doing here. Um, we. Uh, had a really wonderful opportunity to meet with some residents and have a visioning session when we first started the project so that we could get to know a little bit more about Bryson House, the community, and really start to learn how to think and approach the projects that we'll be working on um, and are currently working on. Some of the things that really inspired us that came out of that visioning session was just the notion that people selected living at Horizon House because of the happy buzz. And we have to say that each time we visit Horizon House, we can absolutely see that the community is amazing. Uh, we also learned that it's a very diverse community. People are engaged and uh, there's a lot of opportunities for social connection. So that's something that we're really thinking about as we uh, work on the projects here at Horizon House. As part of that visioning session, we also did some exercises to get a sense of really what was appealing to residents from a look and feel perspective. Um, I will flip through a few of these images, but we organized these sessions around different types of amenities, whether it be dining, whether it be general look and feel, whether it be outdoor spaces. And it gave us an opportunity to learn a little bit about what appeals to Horizon House residents and why. So while these images don't represent exactly what we would do, it does give us a little bit of insight as we move forward with uh, the design work that we're doing here at Horizon House. Uh, so um, these were the top images that were selected by the visioning committee. Um, some of the things that we learned were just um, how important the connection to outdoor spaces are um, throughout Horizon House. Clearly you have an amazing site in the city and a lot of opportunity for that indoor outdoor connection with the amazing patio spaces and views um, out of the windows. We also learned um, that it's important to have uh, opportunities to promote chance encounters. So as we're looking at um, all of the spaces that we're designing, we're really thinking about opportunities to allow all of you to just connect with each other and uh, take advantage of the beautiful views that you all have in this location. Uh, just looking a little bit as the general look and feel, we know that art is really important to your community. So finding ways to really integrate art into what we're doing and really think about highlighting your collection, as well as creating something warm and homey, um, not like a hotel, actually like a home. So that's something that we're thinking about as we work on, on the design as well. Um, some beautiful images selected for the, the dining spaces. Um, again, trying to really capitalize on the amazing view, creating that biophilic sensibility and playing up the indoor-outdoor connection. Uh, and then in the bistro dining, just thinking about more of an artisan feel, something casual that invites people to use the space throughout the day. And then again, social spaces, creating that little eddies of seating that allow people to stop and socialize with each other. And then thinking about amenities that would just augment everyone's life here at the Horizon House. So we're, those are all things we're thinking about. Uh, and what we learned, we've applied to our overall design approach. So just some of the things that are guiding us as we're moving through design at Horizon House, really thinking about the integration of the urban and natural. 
Uh, this site is particularly interesting because of its connection to Freeway Park and the city. And of course, all of those wonderful outdoor spaces that I just mentioned. So we're really thinking about ways to honor the urban context, but also connect with nature as much as possible. Thinking about ways to bring beauty and simplicity to the spaces overall. So refined detailing, clear wayfinding and circulation, and then a simple, beautiful architectural expression. We want to make sure that the spaces feel comfortable and homey. Again, not like a hotel, but more like a home. So thinking about how to make things warm and inviting, incorporating uh, opportunities to reflect the Northwest sensibility and encouraging chance encounters. And then last but certainly not least, we're also really thinking about highlighting the art, as I mentioned before. So really featuring the art collection, creating discoverable moments, making sure that the art has um, an amazing opportunity to be displayed and admired. And then um, also finding ways to really reflect the Horizon House community because we think it's a really special community. And then just uh, to um, give you an idea of some of the areas that we're focusing on, this is just an axonometric, a high level view of some of the spaces that we're starting to think about at the moment. So with that, I think Eli, do you want to, should I turn it over to questions and comments? Okay, great. Yeah, so with... Risa, how does this, norm, how does this, how does this normally work? Oh, here we go. Yeah, we're going to make sure that turn on. I know, hopefully I know. that's not a bad thing. <laughs> Is your first project Anderson Hall? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, as you look at this space, you can't do anything with the ceiling, it's there. Um, are you seeing difference in terms of divided into the various rooms that we have? Um, there's not much room to have art in here, so that's probably not a big thing. Um, AV is a big thing here. Audio and AV is a big thing in here. And maybe the palette colors are also really important and the chairs we sit in. Yes, we are actually looking at all of those things. We are able to make some architectural changes as well. Um, nothing that would change the functionality of the space, meaning nothing that would make it less functional. We're really trying to enhance the functionality of the space as well as uh, change the character a bit so that it feels updated more usable, more welcoming, um, and hopefully you'll all be excited to see what we've come up with. And I'm one of the people who use the small rooms. Are you still going to keep three small rooms or vary the number, or what are your thoughts on those? Yes, we are still keeping three small rooms. Currently, in using the three small rooms, when one has a meeting and wants to have a number of people talking together, we can only have two mics in each room. So a total of six mics like this in the entire room, unless we open a wall and put two rooms together, and then we can have four mics. Uh, <laughs> this has become a somewhat of a problem, particularly these days when we're spread out. I'm, I'm hoping that there is some way that the place can be wired so that we can have a number of mics in a small area without having to open up into a double room or so. So that's something to think about. It would be very ha handy. Yes, thank you so much for that feedback. Um, one of the reasons that we showed our whole team is because while we all bring architectural expertise, we also are smart enough to partner with some experts that bring AV and other types of expertise as well. So uh, um, Walker, who will be working to um, design the technology aspect, working with our team to design the technology and AV aspect of the project, 
uh, we'll be working on making a solution that is much more functional than what we have now. So I will remember that comment. And it's also worth it's also worth mentioning that we're working with the event support committee, and I believe that uh, that specific comment has been passed along to us. We have Nancy Federici here who is officially representing the event support committee uh, during this presentation to keep us honest. And, uh, and I will say that the event support committee really has been um, uh, very specific and um, what's another good adjective? Direct. Yeah. Direct. direct. Very direct. <laughs> 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 at, at what it is that they hope to see as a result of this um, new design. But uh, yes, all, everything that um, the three separate rooms, all of that will largely remain. Okay, and one of the other things oh, this yes. whole room together has been used for is movies. And of course, people's heads are always in the way. Yes. <laughs> Any thoughts on how to deal with that? And the subtext are all lying in people's heads. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Short people like the opera. Well, it's interesting. So we um, techniques, I guess, the different subtitle techniques. Um, I think mostly you're telling us the different constraints uh, regarding the different tech uh, um, techniques. But it's not from absence of exploring and researching our options. I don't know if it is possible, for instance, for us to put the subtitles. Uh, near the top of the screen. Risa, uh, Risa is also uh, a big participant in these meetings. Risa, do you remember? Yeah, at this time I don't think we can find a product that puts the subtext up on top of the screen, although we would love it because we know that is an issue. Right, and I suppose another uh, technique would be just to make the screens uh, shorter and closer to the, <laughs> closer to the ceiling. <laughs> So there was an ulterior, uh, right, I had an ulterior motive also with setting this up is that Methune can experience firsthand what it's like to present in Anderson Hall with all three spaces open. So I, I have a question. I wonder if it's possible for you to be at all specific about any of the details and features that you're considering to change here and maybe add. Uh, for, so... Just for Anderson Hall. Oh, right. Uh, one of the, oh gosh, so it's difficult to get into details without either getting people's hopes up or uh, getting people disappointed because we're still in the earlier feasibility stages. For instance, we're, we're still working with the event support committee and not even the event support committee has seen a uh, final design. But um, I think that it's safe to say that, um, you know, like the ceiling for instance, we hope it to work in, uh, Methune has been presenting kind of an open ceiling concept, nothing that's to locating the lights and something that will also can, uh, assist with the acoustics. I should probably let you talk. <laughs> that is why we brought you here. Sure. <laughs> Question over here. Oh, yes. And I'm still on thinking of movies or doing Zooms or all of that. So is it going to be own apartment and watch a presentation on Zoom or watch a movie with no heads in my way? What are the possibilities? I think all of these things are really important for us to consider. And I think that that's something that we would be working with um, our consultant, our avian consultant on, specifically for this in, inside the space, as well as um, Horizon House on what type of technology could be offered to enable that, that type of um, multi-viewing options to be available. So that's something that we definitely have been talking about relative to the project. And then just to get a little bit more specific about your question, one of the things that we're um, working on is um, the event support committee has, has given us an amazing report on all of the challenges that residents experience in this space and goals for the functioning of the space. 
I would say you have an amazing group of people really advocating for the space. So we feel really um, enlightened and, and passionate about fixing some of these problems. Um, so uh, without going into too much detail, as I think we'll probably get to a place a little bit further along in design where we can share some something that you can see. We are working on um, making the, the acoustics much better in the space, making the lighting better. We feel like the overall aesthetic of the space could be much more in keeping with what we see um, as the Horizon House community. So freshening it up, making it much more welcoming, um, which includes things like replacing the ceiling and uh, by doing that actually improving the acoustics but also changing the character of the space so that it's much more um, warm and contemporary um, regarding as I'm not saying that it's contemporary as far as style but just up to date um, and then we're also looking at ways to just create a fresher warmer more comfortable palette overall um, we will be replacing uh, some of the acoustical um, fabric on the panels. We're also looking at ways to um, allow for a better circulation and flow as you enter into the, the space. Uh, one of the things that we've seen as a, a potential challenge is just how the, how the pre and post function space in that corridor isn't working as well as it could. So we're thinking about ways to help that a little bit so that better flow in the larger events. So we have a whole list of things that we're solving for, um, and that includes everything from how the space looks to more importantly how it functions. So we're hoping to really improve both. And I, I would like to answer the question more specifically. We are absolutely working at um, making the live streaming to HHTV more reliable. I'm not sure if every event will be available to watch on HHTV, but uh, this one is. <laughs> Cassandra. Oh. Hi, I would just like to congratulate you because your reputation, your reputation precedes you. And I think that the presentation that you're making demonstrates the depth that you have and the capacity that you have to really provide us a home that we continue to be proud. Thank you. Thank you. We will be able to rely on to coordinate the next project from Anderson Hall into the lobby. So there's a coordination that we badly needed instead of having everything separate. Right. Yes, and that, that's exactly what Methune, uh, there's been many occasions where I'm asking Methune for ad hoc service. Hey, can you just help us uh, select, I'm trying to think of something. Flooring. Flooring, flooring in front of the elevators. And Methune, yeah, I have a list. Actually. Uh, uh, yes, actually there is a list and we actually talk about that list once a week. <laughs> and there's what, 26 items on that list? <laughs> and Anderson Hall is just one of those 26 items, so a lot of those items are small. But um, the, the point is, is that Methune's not going to put their name on something that is um, without some thought behind it. And they approach, what I've observed is that Methune, your approach has been very holistic and you want to uh, really consider context and how and a, and a sense of continuity between spaces. So yes, uh, there is this, um, uh, I am confident that there will be continuity between our, uh, throughout our campus. For Amber. Amber. Thanks for being here today. We really appreciate it. Um, one of the concerns that we have is the on again, off again nature of veneration here at Horizon yes. Hills. Um, things keep starting and stopping, and I know a lot of it is beyond control because of the production processes and the ordering of materials and the coordination and the kind of boom that there is in the city, and we, we are all aware of that. But um, if as you're moving forward in the notion of what you're doing here and throughout um, can somehow or other be communicated in terms of sequencing 
um, as you know it, as it as it becomes known to you, and as we can kind of plan around that, um, so that all of the well, so that we can be helpful. I mean, really, I to be cooperative, but at the same time, it's hard to do that without knowing what the sequence is or what the timing is. And uh, it would be great if we could just part be partners with you in that sense as well. And I have absolutely appreciate that point uh, the so sure we have an alert and we um, but the alert is pretty thick with items and whenever I guess I want to submit for the alert it uh, I feel compelled for it to be more um, uh, timely and of something that is more imminent rather than a projection so what my commitment I guess is uh, would be to um, provide a monthly, what's called a hard hat happenings, which is just a monthly uh, summary of what we have planned. Uh, I also pre um, present the summary during the fireside chat, but as far as something that is available for people to um, uh, request, I'm working with the communications uh, department to, and um, one of our staff, Lauren, She'll be assisting with that. She was the one who actually set up this meeting, this presentation, by the way. And we, I, the expectation is that residents have easy, reliable access uh, that to um, information that's updated at least monthly to know what's what are we currently doing, what's and what's on the horizon. to that just to say that part of our job too is to help with phasing and understanding what construction makes sense in what order and we work with Horizon House to come up with the best possible approach so that we are not um, uh, inconveniencing residents for longer than we need to. It's really, really critical. It's tricky. <laughs> well, I have received no questions online from anyone, me or Lauren, so no question. And is this an, our opportunity to tell the people who are watching live that they can call a phone number or? They can email Lauren or myself. They can email, so people who are watching online can email Lauren C at horizonhouse.com. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. <laughs> Complete, correct, concise, and <laughs> what's the fourth C? Creative. <laughs> Most often we get the comment when we're doing our, what, there's phases of design, so we have a conceptual phase. Yeah, uh, there's We have a conceptual phase, which is what we're in doing, well, what we're doing on several of the projects right now. Anderson Hall, the follow, that follows, is followed by schematic design where we kind of enrich the ideas that we have there, have a lot of options. We get into design development, where we start to hone in on some of those options and, and start to communicate um, those in, in, in a more specific way, more detailed pricing and things. And then we get into actually doing construction documents. Typically at Bethune, we will issue our DD set to the contractor and they'll say, well, we could build from this. So we try, to, we try to get that information in there kind of early on so it's in the mix, we understand and the contractor understands what they're getting into as well. So I th I'd say that's one of the things that, that I've actually heard multiple times from contractors. And we are using a design build uh, approach, delivery method, so the um, contractor is actually facilitating and organizing the design process uh, there so that uh, obviously they everybody relies on the designers to do the actual designing, but in terms of ensuring that every step of the way where the design can either be priced or a constructability review can be performed or a logistics um, input be provided, the general contractor, in this case Anderson Construction, is there at every step of the way. And by the way, the fourth C is clear. Clear, correct, concise, and complete is how I uh, regard the specifications and, and the drawings. Creative. And, and okay. creative. Yes. <laughs> but general contractors really don't care if it's creative. And in fact, I mean, okay. actually they prefer no creativity. <laughs> we'll give them creativity. <laughs>
You talked about the palette you're going to use. I find in general the palette at the Horizon House is depressingly drab. This carpet is a good example. I hope, I hope you're gonna kind of warm us up. And I, I, there are constraints because uh, we have to make it possible for wheelchairs. We have high, high uh, impact areas, but I would hope that we get rid of this kind of, um, I won't even say what I consider the color color. But, uh, <laughs> you can guess. Yes. <laughs> but I, I like the designs you showed, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Second question, have you given any thought yet to the, to the bistro or is that way down the line? We are looking, at this moment, we've given thought to all of the areas on this axonometric. So we are looking at dining right now. Um, our primary focus at the moment is um, Anderson Hall because it's the first, the first one to, to move forward. So regarding palette, yes, we agree that uh, for such a vibrant community, this space isn't matching that vibrancy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're hoping to um, better align the physical space with, um, with your community and what we've learned about your community. Um, and then also just um, create a backdrop that is much more conducive to the amazing presentations and performances that are in this space as well. So thinking a lot about um, what you see when the room is large and open like this and also when it's um, functioning in smaller uh, capacity as well. I look forward to that. But the, the master plan called for pushing the bistro out to the street and give, so there would be daylight in there. And the, the bistro, I think, is one of the least less attractive places around here. So I hope I'm looking forward to something changed there too. Anyway, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, we have some great ideas about the, the bistro as well. So hopefully we'll be able to share some of those in the future when they're a little bit more resolved and ready to share. Right, and there was a master plan that was presented uh, back when Sarah McVeigh was here, and right where it showed uh, the dining, uh, some dining features such as the bistro or um, being closer, uh, being at the window side on University, and we're we're exploring all of that. Yeah. 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 Uh, one of the things that I'd like to mention, because yes, although it's drab, or neutral. It's, uh, it allows, it, it invites the, our art on the wall to really, to really stand out and to not compete with the art. Uh, right, and so, and I hear, I hear both sides of it. Well, people who live here, we, we know the art, we love our art. Uh, let's not let the, only the art be what brings color into this, you know, space. But at the same time, it's like, we love it so much, we don't want visitors to be distracted by colors that are not in our wonderful artwork. You can ask her how they like the tile uh, colors you have out here. Oh yes, how do you? Uh, so that was one of the yeah. intents uh, with the Fireside Lounge, that it is you know to get away from some browns and really introduce some color. I think this is a bit of a loaded question from John. I'm no, curious no, how you- There's no loading, it's just- um, uh, this is a very different color out here than what you just talked about. Oh yes. So yeah. if, you're, if you want to bring this in here, say so, or something yeah. else. So, so for those of you who are watching this remotely, the question just came in about how people feel about the colors in Fireside Lounge. So right outside the door that there's more color blues right. and yeah. grays. And I'm seeing a couple of head nods that it is favorable in the... Yes. Well, as far as that, there's a, there's a museum in Salt Lake City, um, and the walls were painted a kind of apricot color. It shows the art up beautifully. So you don't have to hang art on, and I have paintings on a red wall, you don't have to hang art on white walls or identical colored walls. <laughs> yeah, and that's a good point. Uh, a quick question. Uh, will you be involved in selecting furnishings, the furniture for the building as well. Good. Yes, we will. We've also gotten some feedback on on furniture as well, and so um, that'll be 
you know, obviously we're going to take as much information as we can and learn about preferences and what's working and what's not working. So I'll bet you have. Yes. <laughs> there are many different ideas with all of the people who live here. Well, you know, it's interesting because honestly, furniture is one of the most complicated specifications for the work that we do because people are not the same. People are different sizes and what one person finds comfortable, someone else doesn't. So you would be surprised at how complicated it is to find a comfortable chair. Uh, it's a, a unicorn, basically. So <laughs> we'll hopefully bring a few unicorns into Horizon House. Uh, to Beth's comment earlier about the not being able to see the uh, the lines, uh, the, the text of the movies or whatever, and everyone rejected my idea of having a cohort of shorter people in, uh, invited into uh, Horizon House <laughs> as the next cohort so that they could sit in the front row and we could see over them. But whatever, that got rejected. I just wanted to add that we are working with a real design firm. And this is a very different experience in terms of uh, we really um, up the game with Bethune here. And I think you're going to see a lot of design features here and a lot of color palettes and a lot of functionality that you wouldn't have seen in previous type designs. And of course, this isn't the, the meeting to go into all those details, but it's to give you a flavor of a direction and a way of thinking and a way of being that we have not expressed in architecture in the past. And I think that when you start to see parts of it, and people will have input. There was a question that came up online. Well, will we be able to have input? Yes, everyone's gonna be able to have some input. But we are not gonna design by committee, right? I'll live in. And Methuen's job is to be able to understand that as much as possible, design for it, get feedback, fine tune it, and ultimately have a design that truly represents how we and future residents will live here. And I think you're going to be pleased. And there will be controversy because we just wouldn't be Horizon House without it. <laughs> but it's really good. It's going to be good work. And it's a lot of fun. And I credit Eli for leading this project. But working with all of the people at Bethune is a totally different experience. And I hope that you all feel that that will be sufficiently reflected in, in designs that we'll see closer to the fall. Well, wonderful. <laughs> so, uh, are there any more questions? I think we. Yeah, I a, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, because there probably will be more questions either for you or for for the people who are watching remotely. But our website, Methun.com, you don't need the www. Um, it is really full of lots of information. Uh, the research projects that we've been doing are featured right now, which is really interesting stuff to look at. I've personally been working on calculating embodied carbon in construction for the last, since 2005. So some of that is in there, but there's a lot of the projects over the years. You can see things that are currently being worked on. So it's a really good resource if you, if you do want to take a deeper dive. All right, I think that's it for everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah. And for people who are watching either YouTube or HHTV, you don't see it right now, but we have 45 residents that are just perfectly spaced out so that we're, we can enjoy this time together, which is wonderful. All right, thank you so much.